Hello everyone, this is Andrew Titus, and this is my first calculus tutorial. So today we'll be talking about limits, which will include an intro of limit, and limit laws, a few examples, and then some continuity. So, this will help us get into derivatives. What is a limit? Well, the limit of x approaching a of f of x is equivalent to l. So, if a function approaches a, it, it'll be become l. So then you can do it by one-sided. So I'll show you in a graph. So x to a plus would be from the right side, or the positive side. And then a minus would be the right uh, left side, or the negative side. So in this function, this limit as x approaches a does not of f of x does not exist because it approaches two different spaces. From the negative side, it approaches infinity. From the positive side, it approaches negative inf infinity. So this is some of the stuff we can do to solve limits. As x, a limit of x approaching 0 of sine of x over x is always 1. And we can also use limit laws and direct substitution. So direct substitution is basically the you just substitute a into your equation. Squeeze theorem, which I'll get into later, and Lyell's Pitel's rule, which we cannot do until we do derivatives. So here are limit laws. So the limit as x approaches of a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to the limit of as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x. And same thing with the subtraction. For multiplica multiplication of a coefficient, limit of x approaching a of c times f of x is equal to c times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. The limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches of a of g of x. And then division is very similar. The limit of x approaching a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x over the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Of course, assuming that limit as x approaches a of g of x is not zero. And yeah, direct substitution, putting a into the equation, and squeeze theorem. So if you look at this graph, squeeze theorem, um, so f of x is always less than or equal to g of x, which is always less than or equal to h of x. And let's say the limit as x approaches a, which would be this point, let's say, of f of x is equal to the same limit as of h of x. So you kind of create the sandwich. So green has to come in, be uh, orange has to come in between, and will also be equivalent. So then let's say limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x is equal to l, then limit as x approaches a of g of x is also l. So also it's important to know that direct substitution does not always work. And we'll have an example with that. And this is the limit as x approaches a of f of x all in to the power of n is equal to limit as x approaches a of f of x to the nth power. So that's another limit law. And you can do that with roots, but n has to be a positive integer. So, limit as x approaches a of x is equal to a, and limit as x approaches of a of a coefficient is just the coefficient. <clears throat> the limit as x approaches a of x to the nth is equal to a to the nth, where n is a positive integer. And now here are some examples. So here we're going to figure out the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. So I'm going to make a graph. And 1 over x squared, well, it has this asymptote at x is equal to 0. So this is where it's going to be approaching. And 1 over x squared looks something like this, which means as it approaches 0, it will go up and up. And the answer would be infinity. And now by algebra. The limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, let's say we substitute 1 into the equation by direct substitution. 1 squared minus 1 over 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 over 0, which is clearly um, undefined. So we cannot really use direct substitution. But what we can do is we can use some algebra. Using some of the limit laws, we can say a limit as x to 1 is equal to x plus 1 
times x minus 1 over x minus 1. And now we just simplify that limit as x to 1 of x plus 1. And now we can use direct substitution because 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So the answer for this one is 2. And now we have to use squeeze theorem for another one. So the limit as x to 0 of x squared times the sine of 1 over x is equal to 0. We have to prove this using squeeze theorem. So let's see. Sine of any number will always go between negative 1 and 1 because from the sine uh, graph, that's a terrible graph, I guess. Hold on. It's always going between 1 and negative 1. So therefore, and the sine of anything will go between that. So negative 1 is less than or equal of sine of 1 over x is less than or equal to 1. So now if we times that by x squared, we get our equation. We get negative x squared and x squared. And since the limit is approaching 0, we get 0 is less than or equal to x squared sine of 1 over x, less than or equal to 0. So this will approach 0 by squeeze theorem. Because the functions, you have sine of 1 over x, something like that, I guess. And then you have x squared and negative x squared, which will kind of squeeze in between them to sandwich at 0. So here's the question. Infinity is not a number. How can a limit approach infinity? So when a limit approaches infinity or negative infinity, it does not exist. But we let it exist so that we can characterize it as a function. Because it just keeps increasing or keeps decreasing, but it never really gets there. And that brings us to some continuity. So these are some of the functions that are continuous. Polynomials, root functions, rational functions, trig, exponential, and logarithmic functions. So why is this important? Well, later we'll have a theorem, and we're going to have to know that we can use that theorem. And we'll have to have like the function to be continuous at that interval. So there are a few times of discontinuities, which means it isn't continuous. So let's say jump discontinuity is where it basically jumps. So maybe it'll be like something like this, where it jumps, but this is infinity discontinuity because it goes to infinity. J jump would be more like, let's see, something like this. And removable, just your average function where maybe this can't be. So you, something like this. So this would be jump. Uh, wait, this would be jump, this would be removable, and this would be infinity. Because you can remove the point and it's discontinuous. It jumps from one point to another, so it's discontinuous. And it goes and approaches infinity, so it doesn't actually reach that point. So, thanks for watching this video. And next up, we'll be using some derivatives intro and we'll be talking about the definition of it and how it works with limits. Thanks for watching. Bye.